Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. The session we have now is to transfer the authority to you. So tonight, we're going to do something we've not been doing before. I'll give you the message. I'll transfer the authority to you. And then, we will look for anyone that has any problem near us there. A brother to a brother. A sister to a sister. And then, they will describe the problem. After describing the problem, I'll teach you what to do. And then, you will do it. We'll hear their testimony. Praise the Lord. Because we must multiply the power. We must multiply the miracle. Say, I will receive. I will manifest. Miracles will flow through me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you are taking us to a higher level, higher realm tonight, in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you anoint every brother. You anoint every sister. And Lord, I pray you pass the anointing on in Jesus' name. Walk wonders in the midst of your people. Use every one of us mightily in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. Luke chapter 9. In Luke chapter 9, we're looking at verses 1 and 2. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure all diseases. You see here Jesus Christ from chapter 1 to chapter 8 of Luke. We read about his birth. We read about the beginning of his ministry. And we read about his healing the sea and saving the Lord. At this time now, he called the twelve. And he gave them power and authority over how many devils? All devils. How many diseases? All diseases. Verse 2. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God, and to heal the sick. He sent them to preach and to heal. What he had been doing, he gave them the power and the authority to do. Mark chapter 16. In Mark chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 15. After watch, verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye unto all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them. Who are the signs to follow? Them that believe in my name, not in your name, not in anybody's name, you too, when you lay hands on the sick in the name of the Lord, they will recover in Jesus' name. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Poison will be neutralized in your body, in your life, in your family, in Jesus' name. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere 
the Lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following. And everybody said, Amen. John chapter 14, verse 12. John 14, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. How many of us believe in the Lord tonight? You do the works of Jesus in his name, in Jesus' name. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my Father. Greater works than these shall he do. Not because you are called an apostle. Because I go to my Father. Not because you are called a great title, a bishop. But because I go to my Father. He's at the right hand of the Father right now. And everything he has assigned for you to do, you will do in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you on the believer's authority and power over all diseases. The believer's authority and power over all diseases. There are many believers here tonight. I said there are many believers here tonight. You have authority over disease. You have power over demons. You are going to manifest it in Jesus' name. We're going to quickly look at three points. Number one, the adoption and the position of translated believers. The adoption and the position of translated believers. Number two, the acceptance and privilege of transformed believers. The acceptance and the privilege of transformed believers. Number three, the authority and the power of transparent believers. The authority and the power of transparent believers. Number one. What's number one? The adoption and the position of translated believers. What does that mean when it says translated believers? Let's look at Colossians chapter one. Translated believers. Translated. Colossians chapter one. I'm reading from verse 13. Who has delivered us, it's not that already, from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He has translated you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. That's done already. And now he talks about the adoption of such a man. The adoption of such a woman, such a brother, such a sister, into the family of God. Adoption. Adoption. Let's look at Galatians chapter 4, verse 5. Galatians chapter 4, verse 5. Our adoption into the family of God. It says, Galatians 4, 5. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. And everyone that is born again by faith in Jesus Christ, the Father adopts us into the family. And He gives us the privilege of sons and daughters. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 15. Adoption into the family. You are not part of the family. You have the characteristics of the father. You have the attributes of the father. You have the character and the conduct of the only begotten son is the first of the sons. And he has made us 
many sons in the kingdom. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again to fear. There is no fear in your life tonight in Jesus' name. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba means Daddy. Daddy, my Father. He is your Father. He loves you so much. He wants you to have the confidence that you are a member of the family of God. You have adoption. You have position. Look at your position now. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And he has raised us up. Are you down? I said, are you down? He has raised us up together. And made us sit together. In heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. You are raised up. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's your position. Adoption, you are part of the family of God. Position, you are seated together in heavenly places with the Lord. See what has happened. Number one, you are accepted. Number one, you are accepted. He says, you are my child. He says, you are my son. He says, you are my daughter. He has accepted you. You accept that. That I am accepted in the beloved. Because I am in Christ. I am adopted into the family of God. Number one, I am accepted. Number two, you are adopted. You are no more a child of Satan. You are a child of God. So the adopted means that you are taken away from the family where you were before. And you are brought into a new family. And you have the same privileges as the privileges of the sons that were biologically, naturally born in that family. Number one, you are accepted. Number two, you are adopted. Number three, you are acquitted. To be acquitted means... You are guilty of some things the devil accused you of. But Jesus took your blame. And Jesus took your condemnation. And all the harassment of the devil against your life. You were like this, you were like this, you were like that. Jesus said, you cannot accuse him. You cannot accuse her anymore. I have taken her blame. I have taken his blame. I've taken his guilt. I've taken her guilt. You are acquitted and discharged. Number four, you are appointed. You are appointed. Now, he has appointed you to a ministry. That's why he chose them and he gave them authority and power. And Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I am a chosen vessel. I said, I am a chosen vessel. Uh, you say it confidently. I am a chosen vessel. You are appointed. Number one, you are, tell me. Number two, you are, tell me. Number three, you are, tell me. Number four, tell me. Number five, you are anointed. You are anointed. He anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It is it's been my Savior, it's been my shepherd that brings the anointing. I am anointed. Number five, you are anointed. Number six, I am assured. I am assured. He has assured you, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you. I will strengthen you. I will hold your right hand. You will not fail because they will not fail you. 
you will not fall because it will not allow you to fall. It will keep you and hold you till the end in Jesus' name. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven, you are authorized. You are authorized. Now, he gives you power. Now, he gives you authority. And he says, this sign shall follow them that believe. He has authorized you now. In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they will speak with new tongues. In my name, if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. In my name, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall tell me out aloud. They shall recover. Luke chapter 10. We're reading from verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. How much of the power of the enemy? All the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Give me a good amen over there. Number one, the adoption and the position of translated believers. Number two now, the acceptance and the privilege of transformed believers. The acceptance and the privilege of transformed believers. Let's remember once again what God has chosen us to be. We must activate it. What Jesus has appointed us to do, we must do it. There's no point saying, I'm accepted and I was simply rejected. There's no point saying, I am anointed, and then we cannot break the yoke in the lives of other people, because it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. There's no point of saying, I am acquitted, and yet we're still carrying guilt. There's no guilt, there's no condemnation unto them that walk in the Spirit. There's no point saying, I am appointed, and then we do nothing. But thank God you accept it. Thank God you are adopted into the family. Thank God you are acquitted in Jesus' name. Thank God you are appointed and your appointment will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Thank God there is an anointing upon your life and that anointing will break every yoke around you there in Jesus' name. Thank God there is no doubt about it. You are assured. You are assured. Jesus lives inside you. It's on your right, it's on your left, it's in your front, it's at your back, underneath you, at the everlasting arms in Jesus' name. And thank you, you are authorized, authorized. Don't you know what authority means? When that is man, when he stands in the middle of the road, and there's heavy truck coming, because he has the uniform on, and he just raises his hand like this, that heavy truck will stop. And when the devil is harassing anybody around you, and you put on the uniform of the blood of Jesus. Everybody say, blood of Jesus. When you put on that uniform and say, Satan, stop right there. Satan must stop. He will stop in Jesus' name. The acceptance and the privilege of transformed believers. What does that mean to be transformed? Look at this, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. Transformed believers. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye, tell me the next word there, tell me out loud, tell me like you know it happened to you, and be ye transformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. 
we are transformed believers. But then, what happens to transform believers? Transform believers have acceptance and privilege. Acceptance and privilege. Acceptance and privilege. Acts chapter 10, verse 35. Acts chapter 10, verse 35. Acceptance. Acceptance. Acts chapter 10, verse 35. But in every nation, he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him. Is accepted with him. He accepts you. When you stand to pray, he accepts you. When you claim the promise of God, he accepts you. He said, yes, I know him. Don't you remember when some people that did not know Jesus who were not born again, when they were trying to pray for a man, and he said, I adjure you. Instead of saying, I command you, they didn't know the right thing to say. They were not adopted into the family of God. But those who are adopted into the family of God, they know how our Savior, our Lord, our poor owner, how he says it. I command. But these people said, I adjure. And then they said, by the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. He said of saying, by the name of Jesus, my Lord and Savior. But they didn't know Jesus. They said, who Paul preaches. And then the evil spirit said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. Even the evil spirits confirmed that Paul the apostle was accepted and adopted and acquitted and appointed and anointed and assured and authorized. And the same way, even if you speak, they recognize you as a child of God. Thank God you are accepted. I said, thank God you are accepted. And it is your privilege anywhere the devil is walking to cancel and to destroy the works of the devil. It will happen tonight in Jesus' name. What's the privilege? Look at Ephesians chapter 3. The privilege you have as Accepted, transformed believer. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in, tell me, us now because it's the whole congregation saying this that's why you find we and us let me read that again we're reading it for the all of us together myself yourself the pastor the pastors the ministers the workers the members Everyone that's accepted in the Lord. This for us. Look at this. Now unto him, that's unto God, who is able to do. This our God is able. I said our God is able. Is your God able? I said is your God able? Able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask. I told you that tonight we're getting to a new level. Everybody say new level. Remember, it is a new season of power. And when we say a new season, that means what did not happen in July will happen in August. It means what did not happen in 2012 will happen in 2013. A new season of power. Now, is able to do what we ask. Is able to do what we think. Is able to do all that we ask or think. From all one, what they ask over there. All two, what they ask over there. 
Hall 3, what they ask over there. Hall 4, what they ask over there. Hall 5, what you are asking over there. Hall 6, or 7, or 8, or 9. And all the places we're sharing the word together now, anywhere we are, all that we ask or seek, our God is able to do. Above all that we ask or seek. Abundantly above all that we ask or seek. Exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, tonight is that night in Jesus' name. And so, you are going to ask, God is going to do it. Number three, the authority and the power. The authority and the power of transparent believers. Transparent believers. That means, the people that they know God, you know me. You know my down sitting. You, mo you know my rising up. I cannot hide myself from you. And your promises are yes and amen in my life. Your word I accept. Your word I believe. Your word I am standing on. There is no shadow of doubt in my heart that you are my father. There's no shadow of doubt in my heart that your word is having residence inside me. I believe you, and I'm not trying to hide anything from you. You know me, O oh Lord, I give myself wholeheartedly unto you. Transparent believers, you are like that tonight. God will confirm it in Jesus' name. Now the authority and the power that he gives to such people. He has given us, so let's go back to that uh, chapter 9 again. Chapter 9 of Luke. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority. Authority and power, power and authority. He gave them power and authority over how many devils again? All devils over all diseases as well. Let's see how authority works. Let's see how authority is exercised. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. When somebody has authority, it means he has been authorized to do something. It means he has been delegated to do something. He doesn't think of, how do I feel? Authority has nothing to do with how you feel. He doesn't think about, have I done this before? Look at this policeman. And for the first time, he's controlling traffic. He puts the uniform on, and he has been trained in the means of other policemen. And then, he gets up right there. And he comes to the road. He's not thinking, this is my first time. He knows. As long as the uniform is on me, the people don't even know that I'm coming out for the first time today. And as I lift up my hands, the drivers have to obey because of the sign and the symbol of authority on me. Have you noticed that it doesn't matter whether the a police officer is a man or a woman. That same authority, the uniform that the lady police officer puts on, that's what was. It is not her stature. It is not her gender. It is not her education. It is not her rank. It is the authority. And thank God, sisters tonight, are there sisters there tonight? You know, I know. I just wanted to hear your voice. I said, are there sisters there tonight? The authority is upon you in Jesus' name. Now I need to hear the baritone voice of the men. Are the men there tonight? The authority is there in Jesus' name. How does authority and power, how does it work? Look at this. In Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 8. 
It says, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. That's how authority works. Speak the word only. Remember already you are accepted. You are adopted into the fold. You are acquitted. There is no condemnation. Remember, you are appointed. You are appointed to do this. And remember, you are anointed. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Whoever carries that anointing, carries power, carries authority, you are assured he cannot fail. Because he is able, able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask of him. And now you are authorized, authorized to preach, authorized to deliver, authorized to heal, authorized to pull down all the strongholds of the devil, authorized to destroy all the works of the devil. Tonight, if you've never done it before, you are doing it tonight in Jesus' name. And so it says, speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. For I am a man, listen to this, under authority. Having soldiers under me. And I say, that's how authority was. And I say to this man, go. What happens? And he goes. I say, I don't push him. I just say, go. And he goes. I don't drive him. I don't draw him. I don't hold the son and run in front of him. I just say, that's how authority was. And I say, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus had it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, he marveled at the understanding of the man, understanding spiritual authority. He said, Very dear, I say unto you, I have not found faith, so great faith, no, not in Israel. Verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. Any believer there tonight? As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. It is done in Jesus' name. I am authorized. I am authorized. I am authorized to preach. I will preach. I am authorized to pray. I will pray. I am authorized to heal. I will heal. I am authorized to destroy the works of the devil. I will destroy the works of the devil. I am authorized to pull down every stronghold. All the strongholds of the devil around you there tonight, they are pulled down in Jesus' name. So tonight, by the grace of God, multiple miracles. I said multiple miracles. In Jesus' name we pray. Now we've covered the point now. We're going to go to the practical session. And everything will be orderly in Jesus' name. Now, if you have any challenge, if you have, let's say, any sickness or whatever, but make sure you identify the sickness. This is uh, not something we're guessing or whatever. So, if you are, let's see, for the brother's force, you have any definite challenge, any definite problem, be very sincere, be very serious. This is the challenge I have demonic problem or disease or any anything any 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 challenge that we can will know that this has taken place when it really happens to right, brother you raise up your hand keep on sitting down though there's uh, 
and there's nothing to this. Just raise up your hand. You have something you want us to really deal with, and you're serious about that. Can you stand up so I can see you? Just so I raise up your hands, brother. Something definite. I mean, be very serious and definite. It must be something very definite. Thank you very much. Keep on standing. Uh, those uh, other brothers that, if you know, that's, that's not how you feel. It's how I feel strong. I feel great. I feel I can do something. It's not what you do. It's the name of Jesus that will do it. I said the name of Jesus that will do it. If you know in your heart of hearts, brothers, not only brothers, that you are accepted. Christ has accepted you. He cannot lie. You are adopted into the family of God. You know that you are acquitted. Or there's no accusation. Whatever the devil is trying to say, the Lord is saying, shut up. That's my child. I know him. And then you know that you are appointed. He has chosen you. You are in the kingdom of God. There's no doubt or maybe or perhaps about it. And you are anointed. The anointing of your life will break every you. And then you are assured. And now you know that tonight I am authorized. Now, you get near, you know, you are near those who are, you don't need to walk from one hall to the other, just go to, uh, just nearby there, and stand near any of the people standing. I want to see the brothers, those who are anointed, appointed. Where are you? I mean, those who are sitting, I'll get near the people who are, stand up and get near, one to one, one to one, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, where are you? Are you moving? I said, are you moving? Okay. Now, we're going to make sure you appear like that. For sisters, your sister, you have any challenge, any challenge, whatever, any challenge, any challenge, a mountain, a problem, a sickness, a uh, demonic problem, whatever, uh, something, fire burning somewhere, you want us to quench that fire, put out that fire tonight. Any sister, just say, you know, stand up wherever you are. Something very definite you want us to remove tonight. Where are you? Thank you, sister. The sisters will stand up. And now, the other sisters who are sitting down, you believe that the Lord has accepted you. Say, I am accepted. And then you believe that you are adopted to the family. It's not about I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. And I'm acquitted, I'm appointed, I'm anointed. I'm assured tonight, I'm assured tonight that you will lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. I am authorized tonight. So those sisters who are sitting out, get near the sisters who are standing up, just one to one, brother to brother and sister to sister. Are you there? Are we doing that? Okay, move very quickly. Now the rest of us who are sitting down, just say, you know, support us in prayer because the people are not enough for us to go through. That's why you're still sitting down. Now, you're going to, we're going to pray. So what you will do is just a, a minute or two, just ask a brother to the brother, what's the challenge? Where is the problem? You know, it's uh, over here, it's over there. Let him lay hands on that, and then you lay, the brother is laying hands on the brother, and sister is laying hand on the sister, and you are saying, just, just say very simply, when we're finished now, in the name of Jesus, this pain here, this problem here, I command you, go in Jesus' name. There's no feeling, there's no magic, just say, in Jesus' name. And the other person will say, Amen, and then after that, I'll tell you the next thing. Do that now. I'm waiting for you. Check up from them. After they've told you, just say, close your hand, let's pray, and lay hands on them, and, and, and then pray. It doesn't need shouting, doesn't need crying, just authority. Policeman does not cry in the middle of the road. The policeman does not shout, just, you know, just stop the devil right there. That's authority. That's authority. It's happening right there. Sicknesses are moving away. Round up the prayer now, round up the prayer now, round up the prayer now. Round it up, round it up. Authority, authority, authority. 
authority, authority. Round it up in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to say the final amen now. Get ready. We're saying the final amen, final amen. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, check up from them now. Ask them to feel that thing where it was before. And if it has gone, let us know. Praise the Lord. All those who have received definite miracles now, you come out, and then you come to that uh, hall. All nine. Uh, come to all nine. All those people, keep on checking out, keep on checking out. We're waiting. Come to hall nine. All those people. You've got the miracle. Something definitely really happened. Something definitely really happened. Keep on coming out. Keep on coming out. Brothers and sisters. You knew what the problem was before the prayer. And now you know it's gone. Keep on coming out. We're waiting for you. We're waiting. In every hall, in every hall, in every hall. God cannot lie. I said our God cannot lie. I said our God cannot lie. Something definitely happened to you. A brother prayed for you. A sister prayed for you. Something definitely happened. Keep on coming out. We're waiting for you. Keep on coming out. Authority and power. Believers authority. Believers power. Believers authority, believers power. Everybody, I am accepted. Everybody say, I am accepted. Everybody say, I am adopted. Everybody say, I am acquitted. Everybody, I am appointed. Everybody, I am anointed. Everybody, I am assured. Everybody, I am authorized. Why don't you stand on your feet, Father, in the name of Jesus? We thank you. Your appointment will be real in every life in Jesus' name. All the accusation of the devil against any of your children, I cancel it in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you of the assurance we have. We are assured tonight. We are accepted tonight. We are accepted and appointed tonight in Jesus' name. The anointing that breaks every yoke is upon our lives. And I pray anywhere in our families, yokes will be broken. In our offices, yokes will be broken. Anywhere where this miracle, signs and wonders will follow every one of us in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the authority you have given your people will be permanent. The power you have given your people will be permanent. 
And I pray, Lord, from tonight, there will be no failure in our prayers anymore in Jesus' name. Tomorrow, when we come together, Lord, I pray, avalanche, miracles, in God, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, everyone here tonight, we abide under the canopy, the protection of the blood of the Lamb. Under the shadow of the Almighty. No plague will come near us. No evil power will come near us. The resident Holy Spirit will always grant everyone the victory in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious people of God said, and the anointed people of God said, and the authorized, authorized, authorized people of God said, Amen. Wouldn't it be wonderful to listen to some of the testimonies of what God has done tonight? By the authorized, anointed, appointed, accepted, acquitted people. Can we listen to some testimonies? If you want that, put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs>